you know, you came in on the day that you were meant to come in. So the date of birth, the date you come in, you can't change that. You came in on that specific day and that the number that you get from that is, is, is a reflection of that exact moment that you came into this experience to have this experience. And the name you were given at birth reflects that also, right? So, so your, your soul basically chose to come here at that time and was exactly. going to take that name. Yeah, that is yeah. mind blowing. Hello, welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today we have Bradley Westcott. Now, Bradley is an international speaker, mentor and all-around artist of heart. Having embarked on his own healing journey, following a lifelong struggle with emotional disconnect, dysfunctional relating and self-sabotage, Bradley is now called to hold space for others to use their adversities as a path to their own self-discovery. As a way shower for a new feminine paradigm, Bradley's work focuses on his understanding that there is nothing within us that needs fixing. As a mentor, he invites individuals into empowered sovereign journeys of deep soul remembrance. His gift for intuitive space holding and numerology serve as containers for total illumination and true inner alchemy. Whilst specializing in areas of relationship, addiction, and conscious artistry, his greatest gift is his ability to ignite and activate deeper levels of soul of expression and purpose. Let's bring him on. Hi, Bradley. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Thanks. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. I know you uh, moved, um, you're on your travels at the moment, aren't you? Where are you? Yeah, I'm currently, uh, I'm living, I'm staying in South Africa in Johannesburg with my girlfriend and my little boy. We're staying with a couple of friends um, who are like incredible space holders, artists, healers. And we're kind of here on a working training residency. Um, we're, we're training as visual storytellers, kind of marrying uh visual art with with our music mm. and we we kind of re we received uh arts council funding at the end of last year to come and do this and so we took the plunge even though with the noise of the pandemic and whatever we just kind of listened to our heart and tuned in and it was like yes that's what we're doing so yeah yeah we're kind of on a bit of an adventure and just like yeah it's pretty magical yeah well well you know you gotta be like you gotta listen to your intuition <laughs> and it's the strongest point right um yeah. Yeah, so uh, to start off with Bradley, tell us a bit about yourself, a uh, brief overview for our listeners. Ah, I mean, I, where to start? Okay, um, myself, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of just a guy who has been, th been on a, been on a big healing journey. That's how I, like, I'm a, fundamentally, I, I see myself as a healer, you know, I've been on a, <sighs> Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a quite a long journey to overcome a lot of the kind of early adversity that I had in my life, um, and the the way and the way that I was kind of showing showing up in my life that really wasn't working for me, and mm. coming to realise that you know that it, the 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 problems in my life stemmed from myself. It wasn't anyone outside of me it wasn't anyone doing anything to me I wasn't a victim and actually I was creating my own experience and from and from that point really taking myself on and taking on my sense of who I am and my beliefs about myself and the world and and uh, along the way sort of shifting a lot changing a lot how I feel and think about the world and myself and coming to be someone who's actually really genuinely free in life, you know, like free to express, free to speak, free to go wherever I want mm. inside of any situation. Like I'm living a really, really free experience now. And um, that's very, very alive and very beautiful and uplifting and full of connection and love. And um, that's not always been the case. You know, that's not where I came from. 
Yeah, yeah. So and, um, you know, uh, you you're talking about um, you know going through adversity. So what kind of? Let's start off with your childhood. What was your childhood like? Uh, my childhood was challenging. It's fair to say I was. Um, yeah, I was born into a house that was um, that was full of conflict and violence and um, real difficult, dense feelings of anger and shame and um, a lot of unhappiness. Of course, within that, there was there was times of real happiness <laughs> and joy. And, you know, my, my parents had a really, you know, love hate relationship. And when it was lovely, it was really lovely. And when it was not good, it was you know really full on and and unsafe and dangerous and I kind of had that feeling of life that I didn't know whether I was going to wake up one day and it'd be a good day on and then the next day and it'd be like a really horrifically bad day and it and I just had that kind of inbuilt anxiety and distrust of life and, and uncertainty hmm. and within that world there was a lot of suppression of emotions through substances drugs were quite prevalent in my upbringing um and as I got a little bit older things kind of improved once my parents split up but things took a turn for the worst I had a brother an older brother who committed suicide and my I lived in a world of I I actually went to like really good schools I went to private schools but I lived in poverty so I'd be my all my friends were millionaires and I would be coming home to not being able to my, my, my dad not being able to feed us and there was such polarity in my experience such and 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 as a result of really questioning my own place in the world and my own sense of worth you know being around millionaires and then and then not having anything and ha learning had to have to shield and hide who I really was because I didn't want to have to be with the discomfort of people seeing me seeing what was going on at home seeing what's going on in my life seeing the conflict seeing all of that kind of stuff and I put on this you know my my what part of my you know my winning formula in life has always been to be quite bright and uh and happy and bubbly on the outside but inside I was covering up and hiding a load of really dense difficult experiences that I wouldn't allow anyone to see I wouldn't be vulnerable enough to allow myself to be seen and I kind of grew up learning how to be a chameleon and to have different parts of me that I would show to different people and uh, you know I was able to get on with anyone really uh, because I, I was able to to mold but to these situations but I really didn't know who I was mm -hmm. you know I, I I would I wouldn't allow myself to be who I really was I was caged in to an experience of being for everyone else rather than being for myself and you know and as a result I wasn't really living I was living based upon other people's opinions and expectations rather than what I, I really felt for myself and that was just such a difficult dense place and I quickly fell into in my early teens into drug abuse using drugs with my friends using turned into using drugs at home in my you know and um yeah life was life went a bit crazy for a while yeah really so, crazy and um I know like a lot of people who've gone through adversity even people who haven't uh emotion it seems like emotions is the hardest thing to uh, feel you know you could go to a gym or you can work on your strength you you endure that pain because you know it's good for you but when it comes to emotional pain people run away from it <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like you know you you're gonna go to the gym you're gonna work on your muscles you're gonna strengthen those muscles you're gonna endure pain yeah that's fine but the emotional pain you can't go through it because you, you you know yeah well it, it is a funny thing in life that we um you know that we train ourselves we, we we sharpen our the tools of our mind we we read books and we we go to school and we study and we learn how to be you know to, to use our mind in incredible ways and we, we you know there are people going to the gym and training the body and getting fit and getting healthy and doing crazy things in life and and that's really encouraged in, in mainstream culture right Mm. And yet, like to, to, to understand the emotional body, to understand how we're feeling, to process our experience is, is something that until quite recently was heavily shamed. It's still there's still stigma around around that kind of that kind of 
work, but it's certainly not mainstream. It's mm. becoming more mainstream. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, it is it's it's interesting, and yet it is a reflection of the the general state of our of our, of this reality and our uh, and the, the the sort of the balance of the masculine and feminine that we experience in, in this particular paradigm right now. And I could talk to you a little bit about the numerology of that as well, you know, um, but we'll go. I'm, I'm sure that will come up. I know that you wanted to speak a little bit about numerology. And we, uh, we, we spoke before about sort of the masculine and feminine and, and, and the dance between those two energies. Um, yeah. yeah. So like well, I'm going into numerology now. So um, what is uh, numerology and how does it work then? Numerology is... Uh, it's a study, it's a study of numbers, basically. It's a study of numbers and their significance, their meaning, um, their, what they symbolize inside of our experience. Like different numbers have different qualities. They have a different vibration. And based upon each number, we can, we, they have, we can um, determine a different set of characteristics. And so, um, you know, for example, I could look at, I can look at any number, but if we were looking at a human being, I could look at their name and based upon their name, I could decipher a set of numbers that would, do, which would tell me a lot about that human being, or I could take their date of birth and, and that would give me a, a, another different set of numbers that, that would, that would indicate different traits and different characteristics that that person would carry. Mm -hmm. And people are often surprised when they give me their date of birth and they give me their name that I'm able to, based upon that, tune into them and, and tell them a lot about themselves. Mm. So your yeah. uh, what is your what is your number so like uh soul path number or uh, my life path number as I there's different names for, for for the same thing I like I I think of it as life path I'm a I'm a two or it depends how you do it right there's <laughs> there's different schools of thought always in life right about how you add the numbers up mm. um I've always considered myself a twenty slash two which is what you are um if you uh, other schools of thought would consider me a, a uh, an 11 too so so basically life path right the way i think about life path number is that what for, first of all in order to, to attain a life path number what we do is we add up the, the the numbers from the date of birth so i'm a 17th of june 1986 uh in order to to get to get to the 20 slash 2 i would add up 17 so i'd add up the 1 plus 7 which would give me 8 and I'd leave that eight there. And then I'd look at the month, which is June, which is six. So we've got eight, six, and then I'd add up 1986. So we'd add up the one plus nine plus eight plus six. So one plus nine is 10 plus eight is 18 <laughs> plus six is 24, right? 24, two plus four is six. So then I've got the eight, six, six, <laughs> right? Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it's it yeah. it's fairly it, it's fairly confusing <laughs> yeah, but it's it, like, it, it is quite simple it, yeah, yeah basically okay. you add up you add up the number of the date separately you add the number of the month separately and then you add up the year the number of the year separately and then you add them together right okay. so rather than adding straight across you add up the individual numbers numbers so oh, okay. 17, I'd add the one and the seven for my date of birth. 17th of June, one and the seven is eight, right? right okay. And then I'd leave that eight there. Six is just a number by itself because it's June. And then 1986 is one plus nine plus eight plus six, which right. one plus nine is 10 plus eight is 18 plus six is 24. And then I'd add the two and the four together to get six. So, so do you do that with the, with the, sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, so then I add all those numbers up and I add six to so eight. One plus seven is eight. I'd add eight to the sixth of June, which is four, 14. And then 1986 is a six year. So I add the 14 to the six, which gives me 20. And then 20 is a two. So, oh, so that's wow. how I work out. That's, it's, it's, not, it's not as straight as adding straight across. You can do. There's a different school of thought which would add straight across. It gives you a different number. Right, um, okay. It gives you the same root number, but it doesn't, it gives you a different larger number. The larger number is important too. 
Right. Do it, you, it's, do it's, you it's, add the... Oh, sorry, I keep cutting you off. That's <laughs> no, <it's> okay. <laughs> because there's like a question about this. So do you add like the names, your letters as well then? Um, yeah, you can do. They, they give you a different set of numbers. So um, I know we, we kind of discussed a little bit before about uh, expression, uh, heart's desire, personality number, um, birthday number, for, for example, um, which are the kind of the, 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 the core numbers. Um, the life path number, expression, hearts, des- sorry, sorry, the, the expression, hearts, desire and um, personality number, they all come from the name, the name that you were given at birth. Um, with numerology, we always go with the the name that was given at birth that's on the birth certificate, right? Because it's like, you know, you came in on the day that you were meant to come in. So the date of birth, the date you come in, you can't change that. You came in on that specific day. And that the number that you get from that is, is, is a reflection of that exact moment that you came into this experience to have this experience. And the name you were given at birth reflects that also, right? Mm. So, so your, your soul basically chose to come here at that time and was exactly. going to take that name. Yeah, that is yeah. mind blowing. Yeah, that is like the soul, the soul, the soul, it's just basically an imprint of the soul, the, the moment that the soul chose to come in and the, the, um, the blueprint that that soul has, the soul blueprint that it's come in with and what it's come to experience. So with the life path number, mm-hmm. um, life path number, I always think of it as like, it is the major life lessons it's the major challenges that you have come to experience in this lifetime and every single person place and thing that that you experience has come to teach you about a particular vibration so for myself it's a it's a it's the number 22 mm. 20 slash 2 not 22 20 right. slash 20 2 slash i'm a two. life path 2 okay. oh, yeah amazing. it's the same as you my dear you're you are also a 20 slash, slash two. 2 you're a right. life path 2 if you want to just you know break it down to sort of yeah. you know e- easy easy to understand um and i think i've i've i you know i i i can tell a lot about you based upon that and it, it'll be it'll be very similar to, to myself you know the experiences we had growing up the challenges that we have in life the the the, the lessons that we're here to experience mm. are going to be very very similar yeah so you know to uh explain it to the listeners can you do a quick reading on me um so they sure, know what you sure. what you're talking I mean about. J- just going on life path number um so your your date of birth is the 13th of August 1988 right okay so I'd add up the 13 which is which comes to one plus three is four August is eight and then 1988 I, I can tell you 1988 was an eight year so if I add up 1988 I get eight so then I get four plus eight plus eight Right, eight plus eight is sixteen plus four is twenty. So you're a twenty. You're you're exactly the same as me. You're twenty, which you can break down to a two because two plus zero is two. From that, I know that you had. You're basically as a two. You're here as as a, as, a, as an amazing space holder, right? You you are here as a as a diplomat. You're very diplomatic. You're a peacekeeper, right? And in order to attain those skills, you had to have had a certain experience as a child and that that would have been to understand because you're here to create peace in the world to understand peace you had to see and understand conflict and your you would have had a difficult childhood as a result it would have been there would have been a lot of very very difficult experiences a lot of conflict inside of your reality with your parents with what you experienced growing up it was it wasn't easy it was a tough time basically uh, emotionally very very challenging you are by nature you are a very 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 sensitive child you are sensitive still right but as a child you were just a sponge right and you absorbed it at, on an emotional level two is a deeply deeply feminine number right and it is all about the emotional world mm. twos are empaths twos walk into a room you walk into a room Madia, and you feel what everything that's going on you feel what people are feeling you can walk into a room and tell the sit what 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 the what's going on based upon how everyone feels to you right and 
ah, it's a gift and it's a curse. So when you're a very sensitive child growing up in a very difficult, dense, emotionally dense situation with lots of conflict, lots of unhappy feelings floating around, it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to take in. And that would have been your experience, right? And as a two, because you felt you felt it so so strong, right? It was like, no, this is too much. And twos will naturally cut off from their feeling, right? The the it's too it's too difficult to to feel all of that that the density. So they're like, right, okay. So twos as a child, it's like, right, I'm gonna stop. I'm go- I I can't feel this. It's too too painful. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna live up here where it's safe. And I'm going to go out into the world and I'm going to take care of other people's emotions, because if they feel if if I can sort that out out here, then if they're okay, if what's going on in in the real world around my parents, around people is okay, then I'll be okay. So you you, you become the emotional um, facilitator of other people. You, Mm. You take care of other people's feelings. And you, you you disown your own. You, 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 it's a two's journey to learn to feel the feelings again, right? But in order to do that, first there has to be that that disconnect from the, the emotions. And um, the journey of a, of a two is to learn to to feel. <laughs> like yeah. we, that's a journey of all human beings, right? But <laughs> but more so of a two because it's you know it's just the nature of a two, right? And yeah. A two will get lost in in other people. A two will not really know who they are. It's like if you listen to what I said when I got when I came on onto this onto the show, right? I, I said very soon I didn't know who I was. I was all for other people. I became very much, you know, uh, being able to mold myself into what other people wanted me to be because that is being part of a peacekeeper. It's like I don't want to feel the shit that I've got inside of me, so I'm going to make you feel okay. And how I make you feel okay is by molding myself into whatever shape makes you feel the most comfortable. And Madia, that would have been your journey too, I'm sensing, right? It was, it yeah. was. And it, it was, was. A, yeah, bang on. Like I had a really adverse uh, childhood. Um, so yeah, I became the carer for my mom as well. So as mm. well as losing my dad and then, uh, you know, becoming carer. So I was looking after her for 15 years and that was... And I did disconnect from my emotions, you know, completely suppress them and not even feeling them. You are absolutely right. And then until I had my spiritual awakening, that's when all the floodgates open of the emotion to feel that fully. And and that's that's my journey now, like, you know, from suppressing to opening up to my feelings and emotion, expressing them, learning how to express them. Yeah. Interesting. Like the, the, the thing around twos, I had the similar thing of becoming a carer right mm-hmm. but two two is the number of relationship right and it's how we relate to other people and it's a big part of your experience here a big challenge that you've come to experience is mm-hmm. relating and um becoming a rescuer mm-hmm. is a very two thing right yeah. it's very two because uh you know we, we growing up inside of that par- paradigm of codependency and part of learning to relate healthily is learning how to step out of that the, the, that, that drama triangle of you know victim re- rescue perpetrator right and um yeah we the the, the, the programming of being a rescuer being a, a carer as a child naturally wanting to make everything okay for someone else putting their needs above your own is classic codependency and like a big journey of, of yours is going to be in relationship and learning how to step outside of that because ultimately although you know it's it's a lovely thing to take care of other people especially when we get into relationships going forward with with romantic partners it's like uh actually it by being a relation by being a relief uh, a rescuer we end up attracting people who who overtake and it's not their fault it's actually we disempower them by overgiving mm. right mm. we need to take responsibility for that and it's just a programming and it's it's like i need to go and give love to that little child who felt that it, that, that their needs and their feelings and their experience was less important than the person they were caring for mm. which is which is common that was my experience too yeah it's and it's, it's the... making so much sense it's making so much sense so from what you you explained it's like 
absolutely bang on about uh, from my childhood the adversity and then I had my sort of awakening which kind of just you know universe way of saying I'm going to kick you in this direction it's time for you to be kicked at this direction and then like it's starting to feel my feelings and emotion and now I have boundaries which I didn't have before you know I was, yeah. it took me years and years to get to this place even in romantic relationship or even in a friendship so boundaries are important you know I'm not that person um, I will take care of you, but only to a point where if, if it's like 50, 50, I'm not doing it yeah. to like hundred percent and you doing nothing, you know? Yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, perfect. I mean, it's a journey, right? It's like mm -hmm. we, we, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I do, I do well sometimes. And then at times I kind of like, oh, hang on, I'm doing that thing again, where I'm taking responsibility for everyone. And, and I do it in a subtle way. It's not like you might you might not even catch it on the external. It's like I can feel it. And there's an, an energy where I'll get I'll feel like slightly anxious because someone else is unhappy and it will be like, oh, hang on. I'm taking I'm making myself to blame and responsible for what they're going through. My gift, a gift of a two. Right. And you're the same is space holding. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's only once you're able to facilitate yourself and bring harmony to those. So my partner, Abby, like say she's going through something and she's unhappy and it reminds me of my childhood right and that unhappiness that I experienced and it's like as a childhood as a child it was like my obvious reaction to the unhappiness was oh it's something to do with me mm. because you don't you can't you know you you don't have the the awareness as, as a child to, to to make rational decisions away from that right so it's like okay Abby's unhappy now I get triggered from you know stuff still un, unprocessed from my childhood and it's like okay oh shit, like she's unhappy, I need to do something. Hmm. Right, it's and it's subtle. Urge, it, it's urge, just subtle. It might, yeah. It's like I've done a lot of work, right? And I, and I, you know, but it's subtle. It's like, ah, oh. and, and, and then I am making the entire, her emotions about me, I'm making the entire situation about me. Therefore, I'm not allowing her, her process. Hmm. Okay, she then gets stuck inside of the unhappiness because she can't process it because I'm not holding space for that. I've made it all about me. And by trying to rescue or trying to do something to change how she feels, I actually block the whole process. And therefore we get into conflict. She starts to project at me. I start to react to her when all actually I needed to do in the first place was go into myself, hold myself, give myself sort of, what did my child need? Reassurance, love, um, belief, some understanding of what's going on. Okay, fill myself up with that light, fill myself up with that understanding, fill myself up with that love, give myself what was missing. Hmm. Ah, okay, now from a space of I've given myself what I needed, hmm. I can hold space, allow her to process, ah, and then harmony's restored, right, energetically. Yeah, yeah, I totally yeah. agree. I mean, that is the one thing that I did when I was going through it. Um, I completely disconnected from every everything else and connected with myself. So I would sit in a room every single day. I would ask myself two questions. How are you feeling today? Are you okay? So that's what I was doing for two years on. And a lot of trash came up because I wasn't the external thing that I was doing. It was taken away. Um, mm. so yeah, so sitting with yourself and, uh, solitude, I think, I feel like it's really important for, uh, yeah. for, for us really, really important. You know, you, you need, like, like you said, you need to kind of just declutter everything and then come back to yourself and, you know, go out in the world again and then declutter again. It's almost like declutter, align, declutter, align <laughs> and go out. It's basically that. So, you know, um, you were uh you did well, you did a reading on me uh before when we had a pre-chat as well so uh, you you said the this this year is going to be important year for me um it is going to be important year for you yeah, yeah. Um, you are uh you're a son number three okay um i get that from adding the 13 of of the the day you were born to the 8 of august so one plus three is four plus eight is 12 one plus two is three OK, so some number three, we're in a collective year five. OK, which is 2021. Two plus two plus one is five. OK, which means a lot to me. And um, adding the three gives me eight, which 
so so three your th your three sum number plus the collective year five gives gives a total of eight right mm. this gives you a personal year your own personal year your experience the vibration your journey this year is at eight um that's a big year okay it's a very 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 powerful year in the in the physical plane eight is the number of the material world it's the number of business finance money career personal power okay wow. and this this year i probably when we spoke at the end of last year you were in a seven year and i was probably saying this year has been quite challenging it, was. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it certainly was. <laughs> there was there was a lot of like who am i where am i going how is this working trying to set there's like there's a sense of like you're trying to get something off the ground in seven right and it's like you're not quite sure all the details haven't quite landed and you're in a in, in a very internal introspective year of uh figuring out how it how it works how where you stand inside inside of getting this thing to work right and there's a lot of trial and error and there's a lot of there's a lot of kind of failure um but it's you it's your process of working out and then i reckon uh in december there would have been a little something some new information would have come in something would have landed right mm -hmm. inside that seven year there's like there's a new beginning in, 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 in that happens right and that last month of, of of a seven year and i remember it happening for me too and it's like oh okay and the path opens and a new direction and this year it was and i and i probably told you when we spoke that it's really important for you to be really clear and sure about what you want mm. really sure like yeah. very detailed about what you want this year oh. because, <laughs> because in it in the in the eight year yeah. you get what you want mm. Mm. you're gonna get it this year you're gonna make it it's gonna happen you're gonna make it happen yeah. might not look exactly as you thought it would look yeah right because well, you... we we don't we don't have control i know from you also being a life path too is that you you don't whenever you try and push forward and move ahead and really force <laughs> things to happen life goes no 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 yeah. no oh my god yeah because so you're like twos twos don't create through through going and get making things happen twos create it's a feminine number feminine is all about attracting magnet uh, attracting and magnetism mm. yeah it's similar, similar with the life path six right but life path twos definitely 100 percent you are here to to draw to you through magnetism all the oh, best things is... that happen to you in your life will, will come to you that way yeah that and is so, so true this year you will magnetize right mm -hmm. you will um i got a lot in my eight year that was two years ago now i'm in a one year uh eight, two years ago um i wanted i wanted to become a coach actually um I was working my business in my seven year and it just wasn't happening. And I, I really was. And then I had a bit of a breakthrough at the end of the year in terms of direction. And then TEDx talk, which is where I met you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Came yeah. in at the beginning. I did a TED talk. I, um, I, I became a father. I healed uh, a autoimmune disease that I'd had for three years mm. through the emotional work that I was doing. Um, and I, I almost given up, right? I was like, something di didn't click. I had a really tough year financially that year because eight is will teach you all about money. Mm -hmm. And I did have a big level up, a big shift in my money that year. Uh, but it was quite hard going. It was quite it was quite painful at times. I had to feel some stuff that I hadn't wanted to feel, basically, as a two. It's always the way. And then right at the end of the year, when I'd almost given up and thought, you know what, this numerology thing is a load of rubbish. Uh, I had a little sh shift in how I was thinking about it, put an offering out, and then loads of people came back and I got what I wanted really um that's right that's in the amazing. right in the december of the eight year yeah yeah that is amazing <laughs> <laughs> right, right, that at is the, amazing. right at the 11th hour like what i want to know is whenever i get a reading like not a um, psychic reading or things that, everything seems to happen in december she always picks up december for some reason right and it's really it's it's it, i don't i can't figure it out because like um november december has always been big for me anytime right. So, like, speaking of, like, soul numbers, um, yeah. can you, uh, now we know a bit about number two, as you just done a reading on me, can you yeah. briefly tell us about other numbers, maybe one to 11, perhaps, if you know some of them? Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, so, like, one, one is about the self, right? It's a masculine number. It is the me, the ego. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, each number's got light and dark, right? Because 
one is is a beautiful number right it is new beginnings it is um individuality it is leadership in like i'm gonna walk that path first it's it's the pioneers right it's the inventors it's very creative um it's a really cool number and yet also, also it can be like narcissism it can be like me me first i'm the most important like, everything is about me and and like as i said each number will have a shadow we've, we've we've kind of been through two two being the feminine number of surrender uh patience um diplomacy emotions um softness um And, you know, with, within the two also, it can be like overly identified with with the emotions and getting washed away and pulled about inside of um, in, inside how you're feeling. It can be like codependency. Right. It's like you're more important than me hmm. because it is a number of relationship. OK. Yeah. Um, three. Three is creativity. It's a number of expression. Right. It's about creativity. It's about communication threes will people with life path three for example will normally be very talented in at least one or two three of the arts you know mm -hmm. writing speaking um acting music etc singing you know it's, it's it's the number of the voice there's quite quite frequently life path threes will normally have quite an unusual voice very distinctive and it's it's the number of learning how to communicate as in like learning to listen learning to respond three is quite an optimistic number it's um it's also the number of beauty and kind of innocence in a way mm -hmm. right threes will often have a hard time will be on a journey to learn how to really communicate what they mean right because three threes will want to sort of make everyone feel okay by saying the right thing mm. <laughs> is it is it and, a bit like two as well then crossed between uh, two because twos are yeah, a bit like that as well aren't they so yeah i mean two twos are like oh i'm just going to be whoever you want and threes will be like oh no i'm just going to make everyone feel okay by saying saying and i won't i'll hold back what i want to say mm, mm, yeah right three th th threes will hold back what they want to say mm. um in order to make everyone else feel okay so yeah there is there's crossovers right we human beings we all feel and we all want to avoid feeling what we don't want to feel. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. the journey's particularly deep with two because it's such a it's such a deep, deeply feeling number. Mm. It's like the the gift of the em empathy and kind of almost psychic, right, comes through the feeling of the emotions with twos. Mm. Whereas for three, it's like the power of their expression. Because they are such expressive people, right? Everything they do is an expression. Everything they, you know, everything they wear, everything they say is an expression of who they are. And it's like the more the more they're able to have those difficult conversations, the more able they are to create like amazing art or like, um, you know, be, be the fullness of their expression. So it's, mm. yeah, that three is that kind of number. Four is number of kind of, you know, systems, finer details, the building blocks of life. How do we assemble this? How does it, how do we break it down into the minutia and really work out the the the, the workings of it. It's a, and naturally, it's the number of like work and working hard and um, uh, yeah, like keep keep just like soldiering on and taking the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. It's the number of organization and um, getting things in order, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's also the number, like on the on the flip side, it can be the number of kind of restriction mm. and limitation and setbacks and two like for example, people with a life path four will often have a story of like, oh, I'm too old, or like there's not enough, or there's a lot of limitation and restriction. And it really is about you you kind of boxed in inside of a worldview. And if you think about four, it's very much about four is the box, right? Mm. And it's about learning how to break out that box to see the um, learning to see the perceived limitations as actually the opportunity to have a breakthrough. Right. This is interesting. Last year, 2020, two plus two is four. Were we or were we not all very much boxed in last year? Yes. OK, yes. good. Uh, <laughs> five. Five is a, an amazing number. Five is the number of freedom. OK. Um, we're in a collective five this year, by the way. 
Are we? Cool. We are. Freedom. We are. <laughs> yeah, this year's about freedom. Um, I'm actually, freedom's something that I'm, I'm very passionate about and it's, it's, I'm actually running a, a, a new course on freedom. Um, but we'll talk about that later. The five, uh, free, freedom is about listening to your heart, right? Mm. And it's about ignoring the noise. It's ignoring the external things that people are saying and projecting at you and listening to what your gut is, in your, in, well, not your gut, what your heart is saying, following your heart, because your heart will always lead you to freedom, right? Now, the, the, the problem, the five, hmm, five is a very unpredictable energy very it's like spontaneous it's like you walk out your door and someone pulls up and they, they've got a parcel for you. you open the pass it's got a key and a and a number and you it's like it's like an adventure like you're off on an adventure and you don't know what's going to happen basically anything could happen the only thing you can expect with the number five is the unexpected mm. you just don't know so I, on, 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 it's, it's very very spontaneous if you're having a five day it's the sort of day where someone calls you out the blue you haven't spoken to you for 20 years it's that kind of thing it's like if someone has an experience like that i would guess they were in a five day Hmm. right because it's just yeah you just don't know what's gonna happen this year is gonna be very very unpredictable hmm. it's gonna be very very unpredictable we don't know what's gonna happen um and five is that kind of vibration the interesting thing like for, for example for, for with some of the life path five and they're learning about freedom is they would have all these really jarring experiences of unpredictable uncertainty and unpredictability in their reality and then they start to become anxious because they start to, to build a belief that that life isn't safe yeah. And so people, th then the programming, right? The reality comes in. It's like, this is how you stay safe inside of this world. And it's like, get a job, get a career, get a, 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 a get married, have children. It's like, and then, but the five wants to be free because it's learning about freedom, right? And it gets really unhappy because they've, they, they're not actually listening to their heart. They're, they've been told how to make themselves feel safe and not anxious. And it doesn't work because actually is by listening to the heart and learning to trust life and learning to go on adventures and like they want to be out traveling the world like fives naturally it's like sagittarius and like the travelers right yeah. um it's learning that by listening to your heart when you take that step out the door life will hold you and life will catch you yeah so with, with five it's like it doesn't it doesn't mean you can't have the things that you want like a marriage and a house and all this but it's about creating freedom around it yeah. you know it's about really it's about it's about you know yeah freedom <laughs> six okay yeah. six six is six is the number of balance it is the number of family home pets friendship it's like matt it's like uh matters of the heart mm. matters of the heart that's a way of, of looking at it um six is um six is the number of the mother it's like really nurturing caring people with that six like home will be and family will be really really important it's quite tied up in two it's quite a feminine number and it's and it's similar in the way that um it, it's a lot to do with responsibility and people with six will in 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 their core chart will often have um experiences where they took on too much responsibility too young hmm. and again where they create it's it's quite a it's, people with six tend to get tied up inside of codependency quite readily because there is a belief that the family is somehow more important than the self hmm. I can feel that kind of... too as well. I can feel that. Yeah, well. yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can see that the, the... carrying responsibilities for your parents or your yeah. loved ones. It, feminine, yeah, there is feminine energy. There's a definite. It's it's lose. It's yeah. There's with with six. There's a real need to create boundaries and to take responsibility for self, so that you give other people in that in your life back their responsibility because the six will want to say yes to everyone mm. right want to help everyone right and 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 there, there can be like that martyrdom right of like i'm doing everything and all i get is this like and it's just like well like just learn to say no mm. six um but yeah six six will be all, all to do with those kind of matters right um seven is the mind Okay, it's deeply, 
it's a, it's the thinker, right? It's um, answering every question with a question. It's like how, but why, and when, and and trying to find the truth, trying to get to the the real depth of wisdom, the real like art, uh, like it's all about truth, really. Uh, seven will be naturally inquisitive researchers, understand wanting to understand the nature of reality. There's the sevens will often be attracted to metaphysics and stuff like that. Although, you know, people with a less spiritual inclination might be drawn to history and science, you know. Um, but ultimately it is it is a quest for knowledge and truth, and it's the it's the number of the mind, it's the number of Mm, can be like on, on the on the sort of darker side it's the secrecy and lies and scandal um my girlfriend's a seven <laughs> Has, um, <laughs> she just walked past <laughs> there's a very conceptual life is very conceptualized whereas twos have a very feel i'm a very feel like a feel in in the space sevens will be like you know conceptualizing what life is whereas twos have a much more embodied feeling understanding of what life is um eight like we've already said we touched on eight power money um uh business eights tend to gravitate towards money there's quite freak it's quite common for eights to make a lot of money mm. and then lose it and then earn it back again because they're un trying to understand the nature of money there's quite often poverty inside of the experience of the eight but there is the potential to make a huge amount of money a huge oh, amount of that money. makes so much sense you see all these like people who have so much money they lose it and then they they build it because they know how to build yeah. a business again they build it again but yeah. they lose it again then they're here to they... understand money not not you know there's yeah. they, and that takes mastery takes the various lessons that money has right yeah 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 that makes so much sense that makes so much sense yeah i've got a lot of eight in my chart nine is the nine 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 is the number of the humanitarian right mm. uh it is to do with um well there's a lot to do with nine nine's a very varied experience because nine contains all the other numbers so nine is if you add one and uh, so if you add one and eight you get nine if you add two and seven you get nine if you get if you add three and six you get nine if you had four and five you get nine mm. it's got all of the numbers inside of it and therefore it has all of the different experiences of those numbers all tied up inside nine nine's a big number people who have life path nine like that it's a, a tough time right because they've got so much varied experience and it can be quite it can be pretty hard nines is the nine is the number of the of, of a healer right and it's a nine's job to keep going back into the past and getting complete and not and nine can't move forward in their life all the time things are not resolved or tied up in the past and nine will just get stuck mm. um and nines tend to be kept tend to be people who care about global issues they're people who are on the world stage they're people who care about climate change they're people who are caring about issues on the global scale rather than just kind of like here and now Mm -hmm. what about 10 you know, 10 is a one but 10 is a leveled up one mm -hmm. so 10 is like 10 10 it will be like new beginnings but it's also at the next level mm -hmm. oh, cool right no. and then and then 11 right you wanted to know 11 okay uh 11 is is similar to two right it has all the same characteristics as a two because 11 is one plus one which is two mm. You were uh, talking about it being psychic, wasn't it? Like, um, yeah, yeah, eleven yeah. is the most psychic uh, number. Eleven is the most psychic number. Yeah. Uh, eleven because it's a master number, right? And it's like there's 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 a there's a big there's a it's a big it's a heart it's a, a high vibrational number, right? And it's a big life a life path number. Um, and an eleven will it has the intuition and the empathy of two, and it has like that's even like it's like turned up a notch you know it's like there's a there's a there's a link right right to source right to right to the information i've got a friend who's an 11 she is undoubtedly the most talented um psychic or you know quantum reader i've ever experienced in my life and mm. the with the with the, the amazing potential because 11 is also the number of illumination right and it's about 
it's these people have a gift like of shining really shining their light to the world mm. um and you know bringing illuminating the dark really shining light onto the shadow um but with that comes it comes quite it's quite a hefty experience of a two of, of an 11 because they've got the two stuff with, with with the difficult upbringing right um but it's there's there's a there's a real density because of the potential of the number right that the equal and opposite shadow is is there and it's quite often for 11 11s gets uh, there's a life path 11 to get stuck inside the density and the world of that emotion mm. um it can be the and, and and traits come out of an 11, an 11 you know quite often they they because of their potential they recognize it as a child and their gifts they they don't often relate to other kids 11s they often tend to get on better with the adults yeah. and they have they have a, a really high expectation themselves people with 11 in their chart have there's often a thing of i'm not good enough like, i'm not enough is, is a big thing because there's because of the pat the potency of that number and the expectation that they put on themselves and they you know they're often like as a child they're comparing themselves to the adults for example mm. So do you and think two is it can feel like that as well? Because I know in the past I can never get on with people who are younger than me or or my age. I always get on with people who are older than me. For hang on, twelve, thirteen, twenty-two. Yeah, I mean the the thing is, Madia, is is that you you could in other schools of thought you would be a thirty-eight, mm. a thirty-eight, eleven, two. So you do have 11, there is 11 in there, plus you've got 11 in your expression. Yeah. Yeah, so yes, basically, yes. <laughs> so a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, 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 you've got, I mean, you've got, you could be seen in, in certain schools of thought as an 11 life path, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you've also got an 11 expression and 22 hearts desire, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I, I'll oh, talk about 22. I'll talk about 22 briefly, yeah. okay? 22 okay. is... Um, 22 is the um, number of the master builder, mm. the master achiever, the master organizer, mm. right? <laughs> is this is this why I keep saying on number plates or clocks or something two two four twos? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I always I, I I see numbers like that a lot, and I think it's like when you get onto a certain path and you, and you're and you you've kind of you're waking up to the nature of reality that life starts giving you confirmation that mm. you're on your path, right? On your high path, on your highest path, and. Yeah, so, so this is a really important number for you, right? Um, it's in your heart's desire, which means like the heart's desire is like, it's like what the soul really craves. Mm. You know, it's like deep down, it's like, this is what, this is what's going to bring you the most fulfillment in your life. Mm. I, I, like two twos, like two twos, two, two, we've already, already discovered like the feminine number, right? And it's double that, right? But it's also four. So and it's a master number, right? So, and four is about build the building blocks, right? So as a 22, it's like, you've got this incredible ability to, um, to dream big. Mm. You've got big vision, big dreams, big, and, and, and like, you've also got the ability to build it because you've got the four in there and it's a master number. So it's like the, the vision and the enthusiasm and the, inspiration and it's all there right and then it's like oh i've also got the ability to make it happen because i can build it mm -hmm. and people will, the right people and places and things will come along right i think when, when i read into your chart i think the biggest thing you've got to overcome is um really uh the more you get into your body it's like a journey right you open stuff up there's there's new layers and because you've got so many master numbers, it's a particularly dense experience mm -hmm. emotionally. Yeah. Once you move through those difficult experiences, it's a lifelong journey, right? On the other side of that, something really, really amazing for you. Um, the 22 number in itself, I mean, th th this doesn't mean to say you can't have incredible experiences and build the things you're here to build in the meantime. But for people with that 22 number, it can be a bit of a late bloomer for, yes. for the big thing. Because 22, especially for people with life path 22s, right? life path 22s are here to influence not not uh you know the local community they're here to be on the global stage influencing millions of people mm. um for example i think 
yeah, I think Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister of Women, she was a like above 22. Was she? Was yeah, and they they are they have the ability to really really influence and have a massive impact in the world. Mm, um, and yeah, that that is the promise of that number, right? It is like the master builder, the master achiever, the master mm. organizer. Mm. So you talked right? about um, the master numbers. So you've been talking about it quite a lot. So what are the master numbers, and why are they so? Master, yeah, uh, master numbers are just uh, the double numbers. So 11, 22, 33, 44, 5, 55, 66, 77, 38, 99. Why are they so powerful? They're an amped up version of the original numbers. Like 11 is two ones. So it's like 11, one's like confidence, right? But then it's like there's a double there's a double dose of, of that particular mm. number. Mm. And it's, you know, to, to have to come in with that double dose, to come in with that particular number, there's like a contract made, I believe, you know that's what numerologists believe before we come in right so it's like you you, you have a contract with sort you know with you know to come in to to to, to have this experience of this um to, to play a to play a large role in the unfolding of consciousness mm, mm. right you know mm. so you know um now we've been in like masculine uh, energies for thousands of years right um now moving into feminine energy uh yeah. what can we expect moving forward from this energy well interesting right we we finished 20 years 21 years ago we finished being in the 1000s right one is the masculine number 1999 okay we was the ending of that one masculine paradigm going into 2000s two being the feminine right we last year were in 2020, two, two. So we're really getting deeper and deeper into this, into the, you know, we've only just started that transition really into the, into the sort of the deeper feminine numbers, right? Mm. Um, and that's the journey that we're currently on in the collective. And there, there's the experiences we're having at the moment in, in life is the sort of like the last power grab of, of that old way of being that old paradigm of, of the of the one and the masculine it's about me 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 and we're moving into a more you know unity consciousness of us we mm. together right um, yeah. but it's it's because we've had such a long period of the suppression of the feminine and that's not you know you could see that as a reflection of the way women were treated right but it, that's not what it's about it's about each and each like the feminine in me being suppressed me not you know pushing down my mind like on in the collective of us not being able to feel our feelings, women being suppressed, but women suppressing themselves, their own emotions and their own wants and desires. And it's the same in men, men not being able to feel because of the, con the construct in which we've all been, um, that we've all been born into and the, the, you know, the conditionings that have been passed down as a result of this particular vibration. And we're moving deeper and deeper into, into a more feminine, yeah, just a more feminine vibration, like, we, we can see it we can see the shift we can see the the external stuff happening and um, the, the 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 mass awakening we can see people learning to connect with their emotions in a big way there's 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 you know it's it is but like i said at the beginning it's it isn't mainstream and yet it is becoming more and more mainstream for people to be aware of their emotional Imagine. states we're moving out of a world in which doing 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 is the way we get and actually we're going to be moving into a paradigm now where it's all about receiving a magnetism mm. and aligning and aligning to that you know the old ways of like set goals and take action and blah 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 you know that's 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 old 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 paradigm as i see it like the, yeah the new way is actually tuning into life right listening to life seeing what's coming up noticing it in yourself what are you feeling what do you need to move through how do you how do you align to the direction that life is always going how do you choose life as it is and align to that mm. and then have have in, have intentional action and then let go and surrender and allow life to provide it's like forming a relationship with life in a different way it's not about us yeah this is this it's is about there, the there's something much, yeah there's a much bigger, bigger thing going at play and it's like we are yeah we this, this is the direction that we're moving and I, I think like that that's why people like yourself many with a life path too you've got a big role to play here because you are here at this particular time aligned to this particular vibration and mm. like bringing forward this this new way of being right yeah, yeah so it's would... like it's up to you to keep doing your work for yourself mm. and then showing up in the world 
right? Yeah, with, it makes with, with so that message. Much, yeah, it makes so much sense because like when when people tell me it's like, oh, you need to have goals, you need to plan this. I've never been one of those. I've never been good at planning things. Never been good at every time I plan something, it never comes it <laughs> didn't come into fruition. The only time it's gonna I line up it. for you. It it will line up for you, right? You you're you're gonna find it and it's through your healing journey. It's through you going into your emotions. The more you ground down, the more you get into your body, the more you feel your feelings, the more you mm. go and keep continue on your healing journey, right? You're a, you are a healer. Mm. Okay. And later on in your life you are gonna the fulfillment you're gonna get is when you actually do build something mm, like mm. seriously like when you're when you're being the person like that's who you're meant to be being when you're being that person who builds this thing that you're gonna build mm. um you the, it will happen through you you won't have to think oh shit, how do i do this like you will acquire the skills the people mm. will be there everything yeah. will line up and it will be magnetized yeah. and then it will move through you there's this a huge amount of feminine energy in you mm. Mm, amazing just have to keep allowing it yes keep allowing it's all yeah. about the allowing right which yeah. is feminine absolutely totally agree now you you are um you are a sp official tedx speaker <laughs> right uh -huh. um and in your talk you were talking about uh most important relationship uh you have and that is you, with yourself in your talk um yeah. can you tell us why that's so important uh yeah, because unless we, until we know ourselves, until we know what we want, until we know what we need, until we understand ourselves and the various different parts of ourselves, the different different layers of ourselves, all these different mm -hmm. versions of us that have grown up, like we can't, until we know ourselves, we can't know what we need, you know, there are various things that happen in our lives that trigger us. And then it's like, okay, uh, there's there's a part of me that's being, that's, that's, that's being activated here for, from something that happened in the past. And it's like, okay, part of me being responsible for myself is that knowing myself well enough to know how to bring my, to give that part, that part of me what I need, to give that part of me what was missing or the love that they need so that they don't have to act up and sabotage because, you know, the experiences that we have, we adopt certain behaviours or coping mechanisms that we perceive are going to bring harmony to our experience or to make us feel better. And quite often, the way that we learn to react and respond to actually sabotage ourselves and create situations that are not what we want and are not aligned to our highest and actually reinforce and back up our own negative self-beliefs or um, back up the the trauma that we had as, as a child and and the feelings that we were feeling back then and um, and then we're do destined to go on that kind of loop so bradley um you know we're coming to an end um to this interview i have so many other questions that i want to ask you about numerology because there's so much to ask maybe we can get you on another time and we'll talk yeah. about the expression number soul edge and everything so yeah um before um before we leave i want to ask you rapid fire questions i asked this Let's do it. to everyone so yeah are you ready let's go <laughs> yeah okay cool what is your definition of God? Mm, everything, uh, everything that ever was and ever is and ever could be. It's like just like the, just the one oneness, like everything that ever was and ever could be ever, that ever is now, like, <laughs> yeah, just as, just at once, you know, it's all like every, everything, everything. Everything, That's everything. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard everything. to describe, right? It is very um, hard to describe. Yeah. Um, so what do you think happens when you die? Uh, I believe that we go back to one oneness, to source, hmm. you know, to, to, to and, and, and yeah, that's what I believe. Okay. Um, <laughs> how do you define religion and spirituality? Uh, religion is a construct of hum of humans who are trying to explain god and life <laughs> through which through a structure that we that we've created and spirituality is more like uh be the belief i the, how i think of it is the belief that we are uh we are all spirits who've who've come to have a human experience mm. what is the lesson that took you longest to learn mm oh uh the lesson that took me the longest to learn would be um i think probably uh still learning being powerful with money 
I think that's a two thing. <laughs> it definitely is a two thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it. You know, money. Money is like money is a as a result of. Um, yeah, I, I, it's not everyone that's experienced, but for, in my experience, it's like it's 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 a result of like really of, of healed relationships. Like it's about money. Money is money is just love, right? It is, and learning to and love it's, money. It's, yeah. it's, it's a relationship. So we're two naturally. Because right. they're understanding your relationship once they heal their relationships, yeah, money will, will come as a result of that. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you believe there is an end to healing? No. Hmm. Um, the world needs more of what? Love. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, okay, <laughs> before we go, um, I have one last question for you. Uh, yeah. What is that one message that you would like to say to someone who's going through adversity, going through a dark night of soul, hard time, spiritual awakening? What yeah. would you tell them? I'd say that you're more powerful than you than you know. Whatever you're going through, it's for you, and that and you're not a victim. Like just keep going, keep believing in yourself. Um, learn to feel your feelings, yeah. hold yourself and take responsibility for what it is that's showing up. The more responsibility you're able to take for you and yourself, the more powerful you will be. Do everything with intention and have a really powerful vision for where you're going in the future mm. and align to that. Amazing, beautiful, thank you. Um, Perfect. So one last question, uh, what, yeah. what are you doing now and how can people contact you? Okay, at the moment I'm in South Africa, I'm, doing, I'm recording um some music out here i've just recorded an ep back in england i'm making music videos out here at the moment um i am on facebook you can check me out bradley westcott um and i'm running a program called speak from your heart which is about freedom and it's about you know it's about uh dropping in in the moment and learning to express yourself in a way that lights you up and that really creates um powerful shifts inside your experience and um yeah you can check you can check i'll be i'll be posting about that on facebook um that's primarily where i hang out so check me out there amazing amazing cool. thank you so much bradley for coming on this podcast and sharing your amazing incredible knowledge of numerology and all awesome wisdom that flew through you thank you cool. so much <laughs> loved it thank you Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.